You can jump off, love. Yep, she says we're all set. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome everybody. Oh, what a joy. Hello. Hello. We are in the Create Forum and we are going to be interviewing Chris, Tracy, and I, Lori Dobbins. Welcome, Lori. <laughs> Lori has this secret that she's going to be sharing with you on her journey in writing her first ever children's book. And Chris Tracy was involved in coaching. You're going to hear this whole entire story, but we're going to really take time about three fourths of the way through for you to actually start your writing process very simply by just going through an encounter with God and what it, what he says. And then we'll, we'll have many different things to share, but the lion is waiting for you to write your book. Woo! Whatever it is, you know, let this story be a story of hope to help you to gain traction. Now, a lot of you that might not know me or what's happening right now, we every Tuesday for the last like nine months, we have been taking the second Tuesday of the month and we've been interviewing writers. They've been sharing their stories. We take this create forum time and once a month, we talk about writing. And today we have the crowning, um, I would say, like the the, the tip, the cherry on the little ice cream sundae, because, <laughs> because Lori Dobbins is one of our own. She's in Create Academy with Chris and I, and she has uh, really been such an incredible, like I would say, encouragement to so many of our members on Create Academy. But the story of you writing this book is amazing um, and it will change your life. Now, in this time for this Facebook Live, we want to encourage you to bring other people in. So share this, get on the phone or text or share this and let's get more people involved. Now, we love shout outs too. So we have our dear PJ and Chris Oldham who would love to hear what is your name, where are you from and what do you want to write? We really want to know. I mean, this is important. When we first heard about Ollie and and uh, and again Lori's book, what she really wanted to do, it was a process which we'll talk about. So, but we want you to be celebrated. So, if you have an idea, put that in the chat and put down your name, where you're from, and we want to do some shout outs during this time. So, but first of all, uh, Chris Tracy, share a little bit about like the focus group what people will get that's at 10 15 that's um, 15 minutes after we're done but share a little bit about why that's important and what you've been doing in building that for the last nine months give it up for chris tracy She's <laughs> thank, <amazing>. you. <laughs> thank you <laughs> you, are. you um, are well we in the focus group we, you know we just have fun it's a zoom group so you'll you'll get the link in the chat there and uh we all get on about 15 minutes after this ends. So be sure to get on. We'll let you in. And it's almost like having a coffee shop writers group, you know, where we're meeting face to face. And um, you'll get to you're gonna get to make friends within the group. You're gonna find out what other people are interested in writing about. Um, Lori's gonna join us today. We sometimes have our guests join us during the focus group. So you can ask her questions in person. You can ask me questions and we'll get to know each other. We'll we'll go over. Uh, some, some of our own writing and share. And if there's time, we'll actually do an exercise and share and get you going in things like poetry or nonfiction or blog writing or children's writing. And today we're going to talk about children's writing. So it's been so much fun. In the last uh, nine months, we've, we've accomplished much. We've had some authors that have actually published, some that are actually working on some books. Others that have are have so much inspiration, they're they're getting going with the writing and getting permission to write. So it's it's a wonderful group to be, be in. I always recommend to anybody that's creative, but especially writers who seem to just we're one on one with our computer and kind of blocking things out. We need to have people. We need to have writing friends, creative friends to encourage us and share ideas with. So that's what that's about. I, I love this, Chris. Chris, this is so powerful. I I just want you to know, I, I never have shared this on any of these create forms, but my grandmother, her name was, you know, we called her Nana, but she 
would uh, buy a Caldecott or a Newberry Award winning um, children's book for us every Christmas or on our birthday. And I would just dive into that. And then she would like, she would also read to us. So she read to us all of the Oz books, the C.S. Lewis books, things like that. But it was a treasure. We, we got to really treasure stories. And with what's happening right now, I just want to do some shout outs in a second. But what I want to say right now is, aren't you tired that we don't read to our children that I mean, it's like it's sad. But David and Brielle, I was just with my grandkids this week up in Reading, and we read every night. And we also had um, Brielle, who now just turned eight, she would be reading and we would be celebrating her too. But that that stewardship of story is so vital because the kids just watch movies, but there's no interaction in a movie usually. Can I get an amen out there? Um, and they're just being entertained. But in a book, you use your imagination because yes. you paint the picture for what Ollie is going through. So I, I love this. Um, we do have some shout outs, which I love. Padge from Denver. Padge, tell yes. us if you could write anything, Padge, let us know. Uh, Mary from Flagstaff. Oh, oh that's my so Mary. Good. She joined Create Academy after you oh. came. Mary, we're so glad you're on. If you can write any book, let us know. And what you're excited mm -hmm. about in hearing Lori's story. Christine Hoffer says, yay, Chris Tracy. So Christine is giving you a shout out, Chris Tracy. This is awesome. Anybody else that just came on, just tell us your name, where you're from. We want to celebrate you in this time. Um, but let's get into this stuff. Let's like, let's dive into your story. Everybody wants to hear about that ostrich in the back of... In the back of you over there. So Lori, how do, now this is important, Lori, share first of all your history about how you got involved in Create Academy. If you don't know about Create Academy, they'll put that in um, in the chat. You can just look at it at www.teresadedman.com. So that I just began to raise up creatives. Oh gosh, what Chris, probably about six years ago and do my courses. But then when COVID hit, I go, what? So I began to meet with all of my students online and we would do a nine month like level, like level one is the leadership. I mean, is the uh, Create Academy Live where we go through all of my courses about identity. The second level, which both Lori and Chris Tracy have been involved in is the leadership track where we dive into what it means to be a leader. We have small groups. And I really equip and train you in that. And then this year, these two are in my mentorship program, which has been so vital where we talk about different pods or spheres of influence that we need to really grapple with and touch, whether that's nurturing people, again, one-on-one -on -one, like here in the, in the create forums and focus groups, or whether that's like touching churches, which we went to Lori's wonderful church and and she's starting ministries there or whether that's reaching out in the marketplace so those are those are what we grapple with we share we talk and we do life on life there so so Lori how did you get involved how did you find out about Create Academy we want to hear your story well when the pandemic hit I had never painted a day of my life and I was had to stay home because I have leukemia, but I'm believing God for a total healing. And since I was staying home, I thought, well, I got to do something creative. I've always been creative my whole life. So I got some watercolors. I watched a couple of tutorials and I started um, working on some paintings. And it was just like God came and painted through me. And so after that happened, then I saw Teresa on Facebook. And I was like, I was really intrigued. Like, what is this? What is this? It sounds like something I've always wanted in my life. And so I quickly joined when I found out what it was all about. And I just couldn't get over how many downloads were going into my spirit. Every single week, I was just so hungry to get there. And, and then when we did the first conference, I don't remember which one that was, Teresa, that was years ago um, lots of, we've done lots <laughs> and so um the gal that was our Kirsten who helped Teresa she's our, uh, her her assistant at the time it was faith 
Faith was her assistant and Faith asked me to come and lead a small group at the conference. And so then after that, I was leading a group before I was even done with my first year. And it was just God just throwing me into this crazy, crazy, wonderful mess, a good mess. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's kind of how I got into Create Academy. It's crazy. It's so crazy. And then, and then share about, because this is crazy, share about why you decided to write this book. But before you do that, we do have some shout outs, which you guys are all going to love. So let me just share about that too. Um, I love this. We have Joshua Meyer from Arizona. Oh, Joshua. Joshua. Yes. So glad you're on. Jacqueline says, hi, she's from the Pasadena area close to you, um, close to one of uh, Kirsten, Angela Bull from the UK. Angela, it's always good to have you on. Uh, and then we also have Ann Ford. And from Kona, Hawaii. Oh, I love it. Working on a book, weaving my spiritual journey with my sailing adventures. And what a great, great story. You need to share that with Chris oh, Tracy. Yeah. Um, Jacqueline has a shout out about Create Academy. She loves it. Oh gosh, this is so good. You guys are doing so on Robin Day. Robin from Arizona. Gosh, it's so good to see you here. As Arizona well. peeps. You have your you have your Arizona. You already yeah. have a group of people with you. It's so crazy. <laughs> so good. Um, but yeah, but share a little bit about how you decided to start your book. We want to hear this story. Well, when I was doing just those paintings in that first year I was in, I painted this. This is the very first prototype of Bali. And my husband went walking past and he goes, oh my gosh, people are going to love that. And I thought it was <laughs> awful. I was like, really? And he goes, yes, definitely. And so that was like the thing that like sparked it. And then, like I said, I was in um, Create Academy. And so we, st we went through the course Create for Kids. And this is a funny story. Teresa always laughs at me with this. I was mad about Create for Kids. I'm like, why is she doing this? This is a group for adults, you know? And that needs to be with the children's pastor. And so as we went through the Create for Kids course, we talk about the different smarts, how a child is smart, either in a kinesthetic way where they're always moving, and you know, or that could be dance, or maybe they're alone smart and they like to be alone. And, you know, it's like, how do you draw? them out of that and get you know get them to create within that so as I went through that course then this painting that I did kept sparking into my head and then I heard the name Ollie I was like oh it's Ollie the ostrich and I went with that for a while and then uh we did I went I got so that first year was over and then the second year I went into the leadership track and in that track, Clarissa, uh, Clarissa, I'm sorry, that's my daughter's name. Um, Teresa said that we were going to do a 40 day challenge. And just listen, I, I did for my 40 day challenge, I just wrote down scriptures and then wrote about them. So I found myself praying for Ali in my journal all through that 40 day challenge. Mm -hmm. And as I did that, God would give me even more insight into different things so then I had painted this and this became like you see in the back of my book this is the brilliant blue dove who is the holy spirit Chris has it and I didn't write this book overtly Christian because I want to go into public places and be able to read and paint with children well hopefully I'll be doing that next week in my granddaughter's class so so I met some kids in my neighborhood and I just had these two little things. And so I told them the whole story of my book just off of these two little things. Well, little Aiden, he's six years old and his picture's in my book. It's like in the back, Chris, if you want to show Aiden's picture. And I don't have my books yet, you guys, so I'm waiting for him. But I, when I drew there, there's Aiden's little picture of Ollie. Isn't he so cute? He's six years old. Well, he's seven now, but. <laughs> so when he heard that story about Ollie and um, he said, 
he really understood that that was the Holy Spirit. This child was raised as a Jehovah's Witness, and he knew that that was the Holy Spirit. And so he ends up telling me a story about how he got attacked by a dog when he was really little. And the Holy Spirit came to him as he held that little print and, and looked at it. The Holy Spirit came to him and completely healed his fear of, um, uh -huh. of the dog and the attack. You know, and so that was like just the most incredible thing that happened, you know, during that time. Um, wow. Let's see. Yeah. So that was telling. Um, yes. and I kind of, okay. Well, <laughs> well, you know, I, I just have, we have some great people that are just want to say hi to you too, but what a great story. I love how Aiden painted that. You guys have got to get the book. It's on Amazon. And so the, the team will put that in the chat. You've got to get the book, but um, but this is so cool. This is, again, so many people are shouting out. They love your story. Patricia Webb from Springfield, Missouri is on. Yeah, oh, she's so excited. She loves you bunches. Myrna Gutierrez is writing a devotional. Myrna, we are so glad that you're with us. So glad you're writing that. We want to support you in that. Patricia says, I gave Lori's book to a friend this morning who was seeing it for the first time. She said the colors were so brilliant, unlike mm -hmm. duller colors in other children's books. And she loved the message for her five-year-old. It was fun to watch someone seeing that for the first time. Wow, this is so amazing. Patricia, <laughs> thanks for sharing about that. That is so amazing. I love God. See, he's already touching people. Ollie's already touching people. Well, um, I want to hear from you, Chris, because Chris, you helped to coach uh, our wonderful dear Lori through this process of writing, which you do in the focus groups, which you'll be doing in a little bit. But share about Lori's journey from your perspective in writing her book. We want to hear. Okay, well, and I wanted to give a shout out to Patricia Webb, too, because during the course of the year, she published a book as well. Yes. So. Oh, Someday we we'll have her on the forum as well. But also David Pennington has been on here. We've had several uh, famous authors and coaches in some of these forums that have been with us in our focus groups, people like Don Milam and Paul Young and Ray Hughes. It's just been a, a wonderful been a time, but also first time authors. We just love to celebrate you all. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> But the, the journey with, with Lori, so, you know, I coach within the group, but I also have a business of coaching. And I've been working with writers for many, many years as an editor and you know, I'm a former newspaper editor and magazine editor. And I've done a lot, a lot of writing. I've gone, been in the publishing field all my life. I love it I, since I was in journalism school. So I don't know what it is about the written word and the craft of writing, but it's just something I feel like is who I am, is part of who I am. So and uh, very deep within me. So it's my great delight to work with writers. And so Lori asked me if I would coach her. And that was, wow, probably about a year ago now. Um, so we've been working on and off for, you know, as we've gone through Lori's seasons. <laughs> yes. The thing about Lori is she wanted to illustrate and write, which is wonderful. I love to work with writers that are doing both. And uh, so David Pennington is another writer that did that. And a few other writers that I've worked with. But, uh, and I also coach nonfiction uh, adult stories as well. People that have a story to tell that can change the world. I love working with those kinds of writers and uh, but anyway so with Lori um yeah we would just meet uh regularly while she was I, I would help I would I edited her book um several times this this I run it off on my laser printer black and white you can see like the markups and things like that that happen when you put your books into somebody else's hands <laughs> Lori was mm -hmm. always gracious and I was always um you know I'm safe I'm a, I'm a safe place I'm not gonna change your story, change your voice, overly criticize it. It's always done in love. And, and uh, I really appreciate the story that you want to tell. And I want to help you tell it the best way it can be told. So uh, Lori did a great job with this, this story. It's very simple. You really know where it zeroes in on. And what carries the book though, are this is this amazing, beautiful art that, that Lori has in the book. And um, it's so sweet and so powerful. Uh, art in the desert you know it's just um like she's got other characters in there 
She's got <laughs> humor in there. She's got humor for adults. Like parents are going to giggle and catch things that maybe the kids won't catch. Just little, little fun things, you know, little <laughs> riddles and things like that. But it's just so sweet. And um, so that's what took the time. It takes time to do an illustration and then to work with the people. And what I what I do is help Lori put a team around her to help her to get the book published to Amazon. And, you know, as well as encouraging her along the way, answering her questions. And Lori was always so vulnerable, would ask the best questions. And, um, and then my job too is to ask her questions to help pull out the story. What is it you wanna do? Who are you and what message do you carry? Who do you want to write for? Like, what is God showing you? And we bring we bring the Holy Spirit into the equation, into the meeting. And he's always partnering with us as we go through the process. And I, of course, pray for you and pray for, well, I mean, I don't know that I pray for Ollie. I pray for you. <laughs> well, well, if you're praying for Lori, you're praying for Ollie. That's all I'm going to say. That's and, cool. and because, I and mean, since you said that, Teresa, I, I feel like this is Lori's story, this first book. Yes. And we all go through times of fear in our life or other kinds of trouble, which I think there's more books coming out that, that are going to really help children deal with things that happen in their life and help children and the adults that read this book with them learn how to discuss things, uh, discuss the problem with fear. You know, do you feel fear? And, and Lori actually has notes in the back for adults on how to carry on it a conversation and suggest some suggestions there, which really is wonderful for parents or grandparents or whoever, or teachers that are reading this book to really help kids open up on this subject of, of fear. And, um, and, and then they have, and then the sweet Ollie, it's just, how can you not love Ollie? You know? <laughs> so, yes, so good. yes. Well, <laughs> well, we, we love the, the adventure, the adventure of writing a book and you are amazing. Um, in the chat, we want to put down, if you want to be coached by her, how to get involved with her, but come at 1015 as well. So you can hear her story more and join Create Academy. I mean, that's a place where you can grow as a creative in any field. This is so crazy, but we do have some shout outs to girls. So this is exciting. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. This is, um, let's go. Uh, let's see. So Jacqueline has been thinking of uh, devotional for her blog, which is so good. Oh, do it, Jacqueline. <laughs> Mary Goddard, as an artist, I believe each painting I do has a story. That's true. I do the same thing, Mary. I am more audio than on paper, but I am open. Come on. That's right. I am so grateful for um, having Teresa at Payson's Church. Yes. And Lori organized Create Academy and Teresa to minister here in Arizona. Yes. Oh my gosh, Mary, we were so glad to have you with us. It was life-changing. I have known Lori since 1997. Oh. Wow. But had not seen her in some 20 years. Lori Dobbins is a very special lady touching hearts for the Lord. Wow. Thank so, you, Mary. Yeah. So Mary, uh, after 20 years, Create Academy and me coming brought you guys together. That Thank is you. so amazing. I love God. <laughs> oh, and this is Hannah Wright says hi, Hannah. Or oh, yes. let us know where you're from too. And Robin Day says has that she had an idea for a children's book from 20 years ago and is exploring seeing uh seeing it as a children's book. We say yes to that. Yes, yes Robin, talk <laughs> and find out more information at 1015. Uh Lori will be on to share her story with Chris Tracy, and we will continue this adventure. I'm so excited for, for this because guys, just really quickly, you know, um, we're going to get back to Lori's story, but I just want you to know, like what, what we're dealing with right now in our culture and please do some shout outs on that yourself is, is an epidemic of people living in fear and their children being raised on social media or being raised to not love themselves or like themselves or being afraid, but never sharing about that. And so you have a lot of kids that are dealing with gender dysphoria, dealing with um, lack of self-esteem, uh, not knowing people well, because everything is more virtual. And in that place, these children need you to write and to illustrate and to share the story of hope because 
that's a lot of them like what you did, Lori, you created a book that could become involved in the secular market as well as the Christian. So it could be a crossover because they need it so desperately. But the little blue bird, the little, um, you know, I mean, the little that, 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 yeah, right there. <laughs> The Holy Spirit is going to get a hold of them because you wrote this in the presence through the Holy Spirit, which I love. But let's dive into that story now, because I think that people need to hear your storyline. Um, so share the basics of this book, the story, how it <laughs> developed and why this is incredible. And, and PJ is going to put on the Amazon, how they can get that through Amazon right now. You can get it. You can grab a copy share it with other people that you love and kids, but, um, but go ahead and share the basic concept and the storyline. And Chris, that you can share the, the little um, yeah. pictures that go along with that. So go yeah. ahead. Go I ahead. don't have my book yet. You guys. For the ones of you that just came on. Uh, well, Ollie just started flowing. I really feel like God wrote him through me. I taught children's church. I homeschooled my children. Um, my whole life is coming around to this point. So it's just really cool. So yes, little Ollie is afraid of everything. And this is kind of how I told it when I was telling the kids in my neighborhood. <laughs> I just have more pictures to do. But so Ollie is afraid of everything. He's afraid of shadow. Well, what she's showing right now is his, he's embarrassed about the purple feather that sticks up in between his eyes. And he tries everything from honey to gel to mousse <laughs> to try to make it lay down and nothing will work. And so he's like really embarrassed. And some of the other ostriches make fun of him for that. <laughs> you could turn the page. <laughs> so the snake picture, I want to really show this because adults can get healed through children's literature. We were in Create Academy Live. This was just this year, Trace. I don't think you know the story. And a lady was looking. I had that painting up on the wall behind me. And this lady looked at it. She was deathly afraid of snakes. She wouldn't come to Arizona. She wouldn't go to Australia. She wouldn't go anywhere to where she knew snakes were. She said she looked up at that painting and God completely healed her. <laughs> I mean, that's just. That Come on. blows me away. So anyway, so here's Alia. This is like what Teresa was talking about, about the humor, or Chris, you were talking about the humor that is for the parents. It's like, you know, you wouldn't get a black guy on top of feathers. <laughs> so right, he's afraid right. to um, to play ball with friends because he, he might get a black guy. So here's where, see the shadows with all the desert plants. Ali lives in the desert of Arizona. I'm in Arizona. I'm in Northern Arizona, but he's gonna come and visit me up here. So he's afraid of all the shadows and see how they go this direction. The other one, they went the other direction. And so in the evening and morning, there's shadows. So he's afraid of them. <laughs> so he tries to run away from them and he spills his cereal and the shadows follow him from breakfast. They even follow him to the bathroom. That's his little sister. You'll meet her in the next book. Her name's Baby Boo. <laughs> and then this is how he looks. He's like shaking with fear. He doesn't know what to do. So this, so he decides, he heard that some ostriches hide their heads when they're afraid. But he's afraid that ants will blow up his nose. <laughs> so, so this is what Ollie's solution is. <laughs> um, oh, wait, was the rake? before that one or after the oh that's where he okay. sees all the dirt right here okay. so then he decides to get a rake and rake all wow. the dirt off so he can get rid of shadows and so here's ollie doing it in his, his own power you guys he's trying to make the fear go away and then he sees that there's still shadows from the plants and so ollie cries and so then he hears a voice and the voice says, Ali, I want to help you. And he goes, well, who are you? And he wasn't like trembling. And so look at how good he sleeps because there's something up in the cactus he's going to meet in the morning. Poof, here she comes. She's the brilliant blue dove. And she says, Ali, you can call me BBD. So he meets her and they're talking and then he gives her, I mean, she gives him a heart and he's got victory over those fears. And it's not because BBD took him away. She walked through his fear with him. 
there they are hugging in the midst of parts and there's hearts on every page to find with your children, by the way. So there he is walking off into the sunset and look at all the things next to him. He was like, um, there's a snake, there's scorpions, there's big prickly plants, there's shadows, all the things that Ali's afraid of. And he's walking down the path. There's little flowers along his feet. He's walking down the path completely free of his fear. Ooh, that's oh my God. little picture. He's six years old and I want to get my website going better. <laughs> it's right. Just getting up right now, but I want children to be able to send me in their paintings. And then oh my I'll, gosh. Yes, I'll showcase yes, them yes. on my website. And that oh, painting oh. is from Rowena. How do you pronounce her last name? Teresa? Rowena, Rowena Edenlau. Yes. And she painted that for me um, for my author's page. <laughs> oh <laughs> I just thought gosh. it was so cute. She let me put it in there. So. I'm so glad. Guys, isn't that amazing? Share with us what you love about it. Chris Oldham said, I got my Ollie book last Friday. It was so fun to read. I love the pictures of the desert. I went on the hunt of the, for the hidden hearts. Oh, come on, Chris. Mary Goddard said, I just purchased Lori's book to give to my, um, my little three-year-old neighbor, Hazel. She will oh. love it. Come on. You're thinking about people to give this book to. That's so fun. Oh, Joshua Meyer may be writing a, a type of devotional. Oh, Josh, oh. step in at 1015 with Lori and Chris and learn more so that they can help you. I love that. Uh, and then this is uh, Robin Day. My eight-year-old granddaughter just sung a spontaneous song to God about you don't have to be afraid of bad oh. people, scorpions or spiders. Oh my goodness. Yes. I agree with that one. I posted <laughs> it on Facebook. So yes, this book is so timely. Oh my gosh. This is so good. I, I love it. And then again, you can purchase it right there. And there's the shout out guys. This is so fun. We all want Ollie on our little stand <laughs> so that we can share Ollie's story with so many people. But again, this is this is like show and tell. We really want to hear the inside scoop on, Lori, what were some of the hardest hurdles for you to go through in writing your book and getting it published? So tell us a little bit of the backstory so that people get to see the journey. <laughs> I don't just think, poof, the book, uh, all right? Yeah, it's just totally. like year and a half, you guys, until this finally got here. If I hadn't been in Create Academy, I do better say this never would have come about. Uh, there are the hurdles when they hit you, like, um, you know, you can see how I'm drawing or painting Ollie, but I would still go through times, you know, I've only been painting since 2020. So there's things that I didn't know that I had to like look up a pose for how a cartoon would look in a certain pose. And then I had to practice drawing that. And then get it under watercolor paper, mess up my piece of watercolor paper, have to start over again. You know, so many, many times that happened with my paintings. I probably, I should have brought some of the goofs with me, but they're um, not right by me. So that was one of the things that happened was getting the paintings the way that I liked them. Uh, a real quick little shout out in this particular thing, my layout artist, she was like, if you would paint the paintings where they they didn't well she could continue this off and bleed it off the edge some of them I just ended abruptly the way that we do watercolor paintings with taping around it making a white border so don't do that just paint background that can continue bowing and so that was one of the things I didn't know. I wish I had known in the beginning, but we made it work. The other thing was having my daughter-in-law and three grandchildren move in with me. <laughs> and then it was like, oh. And then I had a new baby grandson um, when you were talking about, you know, the screens and having people, you know, the kids just be in front of screens all the time and not hearing books. This is my daughter. She won't let Sebastian be on you know, regular social media, but there he is reading my book. And I just like, and he sits there at nine months old and looks through books because she reads to him all the time. So uh, let's see. So yeah, having them move in. Um, I didn't really have a lot of problems with the storyline because I really felt like I downloaded it into me. And um, I wrote another book about a dove that he wrote through me in like 
four months. And so it was like really, really fast. But um, anyway, so I hope to get that one out. It'll be more Christian for that book. <laughs> so. Wow, I love your journey. So a lot, so guys, this, this is part of the process as an author and as an illustrator. And I know Chris, I'd love for you to chime in on this as well, but sometimes the hurdles are unexpected family visits or living or it could be health issues or it could be um people not i know you were having an issue too with getting all of the pictures uh being able to get those into the book that took a, a, a longer process than what you thought it would take right. um, getting your endorsements there's there's like a almost like a, an a through z step which chris you, i know that you know about but part of it is taking into consideration your living habits, your relational needs, uh, what's happening as far as the illust you know, getting the layout done. There's so many different hiccups, but I have to ask you this question before we go to uh, to Chris. Was it worth it, Lori? It was so worth it. Oh my gosh, this is just so fun. And to like really be one of Teresa's projects project geez is Bungie, just like yes. really amazing to me to be where oh, i'm at so, today we're, we're so proud of you but chris Thank tell you. us a little bit about the process that uh, writers need to go through both as a children's author with um with again not only writing the script but also in doing the artwork but just for anybody i know we have people that want to do devotionals that are out there that are just watching yeah. but but what is the process and why is it important to have Create Academy or a coach to walk you through that process? Yeah, um, you know, I really feel like if you're compelled to write that this is a gift that God has already put in, in you and he's, he's wanting to do this with you. So you're not alone. And so for writing, I always, you know, whenever I'm writing, I, I do blog. I've got a couple blogs out there so I've written out thousand no about a thousand posts over the years now so which is really exciting and fun and you don't know who's reading it but it's it's really fun to to it's, it's like there's a law of the kingdom that as you give things away God gives you more so I feel like he gives me revelation or ideas that I can share and store through stories I tell and as I give it away and put it out there he downloads more I feel like that can happen for writing and for a devotional and for a children's book and so as a writer, you know, I like can keep something with you all the time that you can write these ideas down because they can flee away really quick. <laughs> I know <laughs> this happens to me all the time, but so, but you'll, you'll get ideas. Um, some people like to work with outlines and I highly recommend doing an outline for, a, if you're writing a regular book or a devotional, like how, what structure are you going to have and get, get a feel for that. Look at other books that you read that you really have gained, gleaned from or other books you don't like and figure out what you like and what you don't like. Um, as far as illustrators and art for your book, of course, every book needs a beautiful cover. And um, so, you know, we're not all lorries. Well, maybe we are. Maybe we can all do our own part of we try. You know, but I have a thing to say about the cover. Patricia Webb came up with my title. And so yay. she's receiving oh a free gosh. book Woo. and a couple of Ollie stickers and a couple uh, so. See, this is Why? the fun of having a group of people around you that are championing you. And that you get that in Create Academy. You get that when you go with the coach. Yes. You can so I put a shout out on our Facebook page. I need a title. And then everybody came in. I really liked Ali Ali Asset Free. <laughs> but, um, but I really felt like Ali finds his courage. Is, you know, yeah, right I think that's so good. I think that's amazing. Uh, you know, what? one of the things that I love, and, and you guys, you got to hear me out. And those of you that are involved in Create Academy know this, like, there is nothing like seeing a person be successful in what they love. I mean, I feel so privileged to walk you in, in this journey for the last three years and you, Chris, and seeing how, what, what you did in adding to uh, Lori's whole story. There's nothing as amazing at that. We need to have people that will champion us. I tell you, whatever you do, find those people because most people, if they don't have that, they usually just sit on their dream and they don't flesh it out. And these dreams, I have to tell you this guys, because these dreams come at a moment. Like 
I mean, my book Born to Create, it came as a moment. And I remember, I mean, here I was on staff for the last 10 years at Bethel. I've seen so many people get touched by my my what I'd done creatively, but I didn't believe in myself as an as an author. I really didn't. And yet I had, I mean, Chris knows I had so many testimonies. It was they were flying off the oh everywhere, right? <laughs> but that belief system was so fleeting. It was like, well, nobody made me write this book. Nobody said, okay, Teresa, this is part of your um job as a creative arts director at Bethel to write this book. But I knew if I did not write that, there were people that would not be reached. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to say. Everybody that's listening to, to me right now, guys, you have a story. You have these creative ideas, Robin, and those that are listening, Joshua. And if you do not find your creative tribe to help you walk that out, I had a group of people that helped me walk that out. And, um, and thank God I did. But I'm telling you guys, don't do it alone because it just isn't fun and it's not at the support. And why do it alone? Like, I mean, hey, we've all walked that journey. And so believe me, we understand how you feel like insecure about taking that risk. We all we all get that because we all were there. But just like this lion, <laughs> I just have to go back to the lion the lion is roaring and saying, no, you need to create what you've been destined to create. But again, I think the first thing, and I want to say this really quickly before we move on to the demo, the first thing is admitting that you have a dream. Mm -hmm. Like just saying it in the focus group, saying it right now, what some of you have taken the courage to say, well, I'm thinking about doing this. That first seed says, oh, they're believing in who I said they were. Now I'm going to build a team around them. And so for Lori, that's what happened. She was just sharing about, well, I got this picture. And then she showed her husband and then he goes, oh, I think everybody would love that. It's like, it's like this natural progression of you allowing others into your story that, that it unfolds. And then they're going to get ideas for you, like what you did about the title. Um, and then that will create more. So we bless everyone's creative ideas we just bless it and we bless the the new authors and if you're called to even repeat like you Lori, to do that or blog or create more for you like or me like that's all part of our journey in really seeing all that god has so um so god's god's in this but but we're gonna do a demo right now and uh and i'm so excited so in this demo we really want you guys to just write from a perspective of what God speaks to you about this. Again, the BBD, this, this, uh, and again, this is going to be fun. So in the story, again, we have the, the whole, it's the Holy spirit, the brilliant blue dove that comes into our lives to inspire us with stories, to inspire us with things that he can take anything in our life and he can repurpose it. And so we're going to ask him to give you uh, just a quick snippet. It's just going to be a four to five minute exercise for you to write from, from his perspective on an adventure that he wants to take with you. Whether that's like in the book, going through the scorpions, going through the things that are the most scary, the shadows. Um and again, we're going to help you to just see what God has for you by just doing a quick, uh, a quick encounter time, or you can write from the story of Ollie. So uh, if you got inspired by this story, or if you have the book to think about Holy Spirit, what adventure does Holly, uh, does, does Ollie want to take now? And so you can write that from that perspective too. So you have two different perspectives. And um, Chris, you can put that in the chat or you can put that in the chat again, PJ, from this pr perspective is what is BBD saying to you? That's one option in this demo. The other one is, again, what new adventure does Ollie want to take? Again, those are the two perspectives. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm just going to take you on an encounter. I'm going to set my timer after that for five minutes. So it'd be good for you if you have a pen or paper handy guys go ahead grab that the other thing you can do too is you can grab um just like uh your notes in your phone whatever you have and you can start to write from that perspective there 
Um, Chris, anything else you want to add for our demo before we start? Um, no, that sounds really good. Other than just, just really, you know, ask, yeah, ask the Holy Spirit and just be brave about what he's saying and just start to write and don't stop writing until we're done. <laughs> yeah, and, it's and, be a spontaneous time for you. So. Yeah, I think that's really good. Let it be spontaneous. This isn't you trying to figure everything out. This is like a free flow. So um, don't get into punctuation. Don't get into an full like spirit, like really just let the Holy Spirit, the BBD, the brilliant blue dove speak to you. Lori, anything else that you want to add before we start the demo? A little child shall lead them. And so Ollie learns how to deal with this fear. But what about you guys as an adult? What is the fears God's brought you through? What are the shadows that have been in your life that you've been afraid of? And what does the Holy Spirit want to say to you about that? Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. I love that. Okay, you guys, I want you to close your eyes, except if you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> so Holy Spirit, come. You are the brilliant, blue, beautiful dove that has gone, gone into so many places with us in our lives. And and is there some, is there a story that you want us to look at in our lives, like with what happened with Ollie to go through the, the pain or the issues and see your power or your presence, Lord? Is there something, Holy Spirit, that you want to give them? Or do you want to write this from Ollie's perspective? So we're just going to let there be silence for about, about a minute for the Holy Spirit just to speak to you right now. Okay, time is up, everybody. Okay, go ahead and go to your notes, your journal, any place where you can write. And I want you to write for four minutes on what God shows you. So take a moment and write starting right now.
Okay, 30 more seconds. Okay, I'm going to call you all back. <laughs> so go ahead, everybody, and put in the chat what you wrote. We want to hear your story. Again, you had two perspectives. You could pick either from following Ollie in another adventure or having the Holy Spirit lead you into an adventure of freedom for yourself and your journey. So I want to hear, Chris Tracy, what did you write? Well, I'm not sure this was exactly in line, but this is what I heard from the Holy Spirit while we've been yes. talking. But I just was thinking about uh, risk. And uh, I, I think I'd like to write a journal type book for adults uh, mm -hmm. about risk and tell my stories um, at, you know, leading into an area where they would, they would relate and tell their stories. And so um, my stories of overcoming, you know, things like when I moved, first moved to Colorado right after college and all the things that were really scary for me, like marrying a, a man with two children, uh, letting go of things that were dear to me and moving to Reading <laughs> to go to BSS. Yes. Like yes. big things in my life that really changed my life. Um, and so, and then I went on to uh, how we go, grow by taking risks, what people should, this is kind of an outline for the book, what people should, um, who, who, what people should be listened to, when should we wait? When should we jump in? Why is it important to take risks? What does God say about it? Uh, who were Bible characters who took risks? What does risk and faith have? What do risk and faith have in common? Where is God in the risk and what now? And just kind of bringing people through a journey of realizing themselves, the risks they've taken and how they've been taught through those risks and how oh, important it is. So, so yeah. good. It's a book that people awesome. should get. Yes. I love it. Lori, what about you? What did you write? Well, guess what, guys? <laughs> the Lord just put in me the next Ollie book. One day, Ollie spotted a strange-looking ostrich off in the distance. What is that, Ollie thought? As he got closer, the weird ostrich became even weirder. Ollie stared at this creature before him. What kind of ostrich are you? Ollie asked. I'm an emu, the strange bird said. Why aren't you pink, like... Let Ali asked. I was wondering why you were pink, the emu told him. You have so many colors for an ostrich. How come? Where I come from, ostriches are a boring tan and black color. Ali thought and thought about that. He never questioned before why he was pink. He just assumed that all ostriches were pink. He didn't even know that emus existed. So the emu has green and blue feathers, and it's going to be a book about racism. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. I love it. Anybody else in the chat, go ahead and put yours in. I'll write mine. Mine is also a book that you could put together too. Uh, this is um, Be Still, said the Ollie's teacher, but he couldn't sit still. He was thinking of the race coming up and maybe he had a chance to win. All the other ostrich, ostrich kids were all, they were all sitting nice, and they all knew that Jerry would probably win because he did last year. Well, after the third rebuke from his teacher for, uh, for Ollie to be still, the recess bell rang. All the kids got up to get their snack and then go out. But Ollie raced out of there with the speed of lightning to talk to BBD about his idea to race or not to race. I mean, he didn't think that he could really do it because last year he fell down and he was laughed at. But now he had more confidence because BBD had helped him face his fears of the shadows. So maybe he could conquer her his fear of being humiliated and maybe he could race and feel good about that. So, oh, I like yes. that so much. I like how you brought in the first book into that that he learned yes. you know to faces yeah that'll be in the second book too how bbd came oh out. yes you will well come on jesus so guys i want you to share your stories because of time share them at 10 15 the zoom link please pj 
and Chris put that in the, the chat right now. We want you to join us. And Chris, what are you excited about uh, for you and for Lori to talk about um, during this uh, focus group? Let's hear. Well, I'm just excited about just sharing the flow of creativity that we've started here in the forum today. And um, and I really want to hear uh, everybody that did this exercise. I want to hear what you wrote. So we'll let everybody have a chance to do that. Um, don't be afraid. We're very kind and we, we're not going to critique. We just, I embrace, yeah. I embrace all of your writing. I love to hear your stories and your ideas and yeah. we'll just yeah. get, get to know each other a little bit. So that'll be good. Yeah. Yeah, please join. It's all free. You'll get to know Create Academy better with the different people sharing and Lori will be there. But Lori, I would love for you just to impart to people right now and give them courage. Give them courage like Ollie had to go after their dreams. So go ahead and pray. All righty. Well, Father God, I just thank you so much for all the people who have been here and the people who will even listen to this in the future. Lord, we just impart to them what you've given to the three of us, um, that they would be able to go forth and create, Lord, that you would drop those ideas into their heads. Now, I almost see like, um, like brains opening up and God's putting within you the words that he wants to draw out of you. So, Lord, as is visual for BBD as the Holy Spirit, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you come now and flutter into that brain that I see opened in each and every person, and you have a story for them to write. You have something that you want to draw out of them. And so as an act of uh, courage right now, I draw that out of you in Jesus' name and just give to you what God's given to me, what he's given to Chris, what he's given to, to Teresa, and that that anointing could come to you now because it comes from the Holy Spirit. I really feel God strong on my hands and wish I could lay them on all of your heads. So Lord, just keep on imparting to them what you want to bring out of them. Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Woo. Okay, you guys have fun in the focus group. Again, that starts in 15 minutes. Just follow the Zoom link that was in the chat. And uh, and we'll, we'll see you then. Blessings, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye. Lord. Bye, Chris.